Welcome to the Get Fit Guys Quick and Dirty Tips to Get Moving and Shape Up. My name is Brock Armstrong, I'm the Get Fit Guy, and you know what? We all know that frequent recovery days and good consistent sleep are important for both your performance and your fitness, but are you getting enough of either? Well, today I'm going to talk to a fellow named Will Ahmed, who's the CEO of a recovery device called Whoop, and together we are going to examine and quantify sleep, recovery, and performance. It has been a while since I wrote the podcast episode called Six Reasons Recovery is Essential to Your Exercise Routine, and even longer since I did the podcast called The Perfect Workout Recovery Day. But you know what? I stand by my claim that it is the alternation between stress and rest that moves us to higher and higher fitness levels. I also still believe the higher the training intensity and effort, the greater the need for planned recovery. I mean, let's face it, when you're under-recovered or overtrained, your ability to positively adapt to your training or gain fitness is zapped. And in addition to putting yourself at risk for injury and illness, you really are wasting your precious time. And I don't know about you, but I want results when I train. So, a while ago, to help me keep an eye on that stress-rest balance, I decided to give a device called Whoop a try. And after a few weeks of using it, I was so intrigued by the device that I invited the founder and CEO to chat about his background, the science of recovery, and why he has dedicated his life and business to ensuring we all get enough of it. So, first, a little bit about Will. Will was recruited to Harvard and became captain of the men's varsity squash team and a D1 athlete, and during that time he was amazed how little he actually knew about his body. He would often train for three hours a day with his teammates without actually knowing what gains, if any, he was making in his fitness. He was surrounded by athletes who overtrained, misinterpreted fitness peaks, underestimated recovery and sleep, and you know what? They got injured. In fact, he felt that whether or not he and his teammates were truly prepared for a game day, well, it often seemed random instead of planned. So Will became inspired by a simple idea. Humans, especially athletes, could optimize their daily performance not through a random sequence of events and decisions, but rather a systematic approach to understanding the body. Sound intriguing? I thought so too. So I'll stop yammering and let's dive into the interview. Can you just fill the, the listeners in on why exactly is recovery so, so important for them? Well, you know, I think overall, when it comes to getting fitter, most people focus on what they're doing in the gym or what they're doing during practice. And there's this big, big focus on exercise. And what people forget is that your body's actually getting fitter when it recovers from exercise. A lot of when your body is getting stronger is during slow wave sleep, which happens obviously when you're sleeping. That's when your body pr produces 95% of its HGH. That's human growth hormone? Human growth hormone, yeah. yeah. And so the idea that people or athletes would focus entirely on stress and not focus on recovery means that they're actually not focusing on getting fitter. Hmm. And I learned this the hard way because I was a college athlete. I was always into sports and exercise. And while being a captain of the Harvard squash team, I was someone who used to overtrain. And overtraining is quite literally when you're putting more stress on your body than your body's recovered for. And so I got fascinated with this concept of recovery and how you could monitor recovery. And I did a ton of physiology research while I was in school to figure out how can you train optimally? How can you predict overtraining? How do you recognize that someone's recovered or not recovered, what is good sleep? Those were the questions I set out to uh, to answer, and I think fortunately with Whoop today, we've answered a lot of them. How does Whoop actually help you with that? What, what biomarkers or indicators is it looking for? Well, Whoop is a wearable system that is designed to improve performance, so it includes hardware and analytics and software. On the hardware side, it's a small sensor, as you know, that's collecting data across five different measurements 100 times a second. So we collect by far the most data on the body. 
um, in a given day of any product on the market. And it's about 100 megabytes of data on a person per day. And that allows us to really understand things like heart rate as well as a chest strap otherwise would measure, heart rate variability as well as uh, an electrocardiogram would measure. Uh, and then we also do a lot around movement and um, temperature. And in combination with heart rate, that gives us a great lens into sleep. And so we're able to measure sleep as accurately uh, as a PSG machine, which is the, the gold standard in a sleep lab. And when it comes to the analytics, a user at the end of the day is really going to understand their body through strain and recovery. So we were talking earlier about the importance of balancing those things. When your body is more recovered, you should take on more strain. And when your body is less recovered, you should take on less strain. And, you know, we find that a lot of highly motivated people that we work with, they actually get more benefit from resting than they do from turning up the volume on their exercise. So that's where that balance between strain and recovery is so important. And for the first time, individuals can really understand every morning, okay, how ready is my body to perform? And maybe as a result of having a lower recovery, they'll actually dial back their strain for that day. And then even at the end of the day, we look at who you are and the stress that's accumulated on your body, and we'll tell you how much sleep you need before you go to bed to recover for tomorrow. Then you have a new recovery and the whole thing restarts again. So it's designed to really live a step ahead of you and again to, to optimize around balancing strain and recovery. Now, you mentioned sleep in there, and I definitely want to get back to that um, sometime later on in this conversation. But I kind of wanted to, to dive a little bit further into the idea of waking up and feeling a little bit tired and sore. Isn't that OK sometimes? Like, do you always want to be... Like you, you mentioned that like if you wake up and your recovery score is a little bit low, you may want to dial back your, your workouts. But is that always the truth? Or do you, do you sometimes want to push through those, those periods of feeling a little more tired or being a little less recovered than, than optimally recovered? Well, one thing I just want to clarify is that being tired, being sore, and, being, and having a low recovery are all separate things. Oh, okay. And they're not necessarily correlated. Okay. One thing that I've found in just you know running Whoop for the last seven years and with working with some of the best athletes in the world, literally, is you know feelings are largely overrated. This concept of waking up in the morning and feeling tired or feeling a little sick or um, being sore, those are things that um, don't actually, Actually, do a great job predicting how prepared your body is to perform. And when I mean perform, I mean take stress on your body or have a world-class outcome. Sure, there's these these obvious days where your body is super sore, you're dehydrated, and Whoop tells you what you already know, which is that your body is um, your body is run down. This happens especially when you're sick. So, back to your initial question, I think. I think soreness is, is in, you know, it's a good thing to be aware of. Obviously, if your body's super sore, you may not want to be doing heavy weightlifting or things of that nature. And your point about pushing through is true. Like, it's not, it's not an ultimatum that if your body is run down, you can't exercise. It's just to say that if you do that for a longer period of time, you're going to put yourself at risk for injury or overtraining. And a lot of this goes back to what your goals are. So if you have an event on Saturday and today is Monday, you know, you may want to train hard no matter what. But if all of a sudden Thursday comes along and your body's run down, you, you may not want to do the same workout you had planned. You may want to dial it back to make sure your recovery catches up for Saturday. And so that's a little bit of how to think about it. Gotcha. So it's more like a recovery continuum than it is sort of a 24 hour snapshot. Yeah, I think you want to, you want, like, look, first of all, you can only manage what you measure, right? And if you ask any athlete if sleep or recovery is important, they're going to say yes. And then if you ask them whether they measure it, they may likely say no. So now that we see this big movement with whoop and, and this focus on sleep and recovery, all of a sudden you're empowered with the data to make decisions. So look, Whoop may tell you you're run down. You may still choose to exercise hard. It's just that if you do that over a longer period of time, you're going to start to see effects on your body. Yeah, yeah, I see that as a as a coach. I occasionally want my athletes to sort of, 
I don't know, metaphorically dig themselves into a bit of a hole, but you don't want that hole to get too deep because then it's hard to climb out of it. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you know, Olympic power lifters will often lift to the point where they know the next day they're going to be run down. So actually being run down the next day is something that they're trying to achieve, ironically. Um, but of course on that day when their body's run down, they won't do anything like complete rest. So that's one very specific example. All right. Now, since you brought up the Olympic, um, power lifters and stuff, what kind of athletes do you see that are, that should be more focused on this, uh, on getting a really good quality recovery period in? Is it, is it the weekend warriors? Is it only the professional athletes who would benefit from really focusing on recovery? Well, I think generally speaking, everyone would benefit from focusing on <laughs> recovery, especially in this ever connected world where you go to bed with more distractions and you wake up with more distractions. So I think everyone would benefit from more recovery. And, and I, to generalize, I would also say sleep. If you're talking more specifically about sports and different disciplines, I think that the sports that tend to be more talent oriented or have high degrees of talent often are the sports where athletes don't take as good of care of themselves as they should. So we see this with sports like uh, basketball or uh, baseball or even golf, where, yes, there's a cardiovascular component, but you also have guys that have just freakish eye-hand coordination mm. or you know freakish ability. And those, those tend to be cases where really focusing on restful, you know, being restful and, you know, recovering properly, you see these massive jumps in their game. I'll give you an example. We have an NBA point guard who's an all-star. And when he has a high recovery on whoop, so he has a green recovery, his stat line at the end of the game is 22 points per night, 52% field goal percentage, and one turnover. Hmm. When he has a red recovery, he has 18 points per game. He's got 35% field goal percentage, and he has eight turnovers, right? And this is now over, you know, um, hundreds of games. So, you know, this athlete literally knows that if he has a high recovery, he is a max contract guy in the NBA. And if he has a low recovery, he's like coming off the bench on a mediocre team. Like he's two different athletes depending on his recovery. And so that's an example of someone who's now realizing, okay, all I need to focus on is that other half of the day because it allows me to fulfill my talent. We've worked with um, minor league baseball players who spend nine hours in bed and get four hours of sleep. Hmm. I mean, that person's a near professional athlete. They're in the 0.1% of what they can, you know, someone can do at their position. And they're effectively playing the sport drunk. Hmm. So you know, how much ground can that athlete make by, uh, by ultimately investing more in uh, sleep and, and recovery? You know, if I, if I'm coaching that athlete, I'm, I'm trying to send him to sleep doctors. I'm trying to do everything I can to improve uh, his sleep. The one other thing I'll add is endurance athletes really vary quite widely on how focused they are on recovery you know, at the I think at the very peak levels, endurance athletes are quite um, focused on understanding recovery because that can make all the difference. In a sport like golf, there's certain people who are just better at putting than others, right? And maybe it correlates with recovery. We have to see. But in in cycling, for example, you know, being more recovered is the difference between winning and losing in in a lot of cases. So. That's where there should be, I would say, even more focus. And in some cases, you see that. In some cases, you don't. And you said something really interesting right at the beginning of the this the point that you just made about um, being in this connected world and and having some extra stress in our lives just because of that. Can you elaborate a little bit more? Like, I, I guess I got a little hung up on the idea that this kind of measuring your recovery and your stress was more about sport and performance, but it sounds like it could benefit just even like the, I don't know, high performing CEO type or, or any type A personality that's trying to really achieve high things in this life. Oh, of course. Yeah. I mean, our, our population is growing in terms of executives, 
We've got surgeons on WHOOP. We have doctors. We have firemen, cops, pilots. So these are people that don't necessarily, you know, aren't necessarily athletes, but they want to understand how everything in their life is affecting their body. And again, back to that stress recovery balance, that's what we all need to do to function at a high level. You know, to your question, I think one thing that's interesting about WHOOP is the way that you learn how other things in your life affect your data. And it's not just exercise, right? It could be, uh, it could be psychological stress. It could be uh, relationships that you're in. It could be everything about your bedtime routine. Right? That's one thing I find really interesting is how everything about my bedroom and lighting and all those things can start to affect your sleep, different supplements you take, your diet and your overall life. I mean, just tweaking things in your diet can dramatically affect uh, your body. Uh, alcohol and drugs can dramatically affect your body. And by measuring your body 24-7, you can start to understand what are the things that are good for your body and what are the things that aren't. And mind you, everyone's different, so mm-hmm. there, there's a different recipe for everyone. Mm-hmm. The key is, though, by managing this data, you, you're you empowered to figure out what's right for you. So you mentioned a couple of things in there about sort of what would be considered, I guess, sleep hygiene. Do you have more more sort of sleep hacks for us that we could could give the audience here to to help them with their recovery and getting some better deep sleep? Well, the best sleep hack is that if you go to bed and wake up at a consistent time, you can get away with sleeping less hours. So if you've ever met someone, and we all have, who say, oh, I only need six hours, I only need seven hours, um, maybe they've even said less. Generally, that's not true. But the reality is, if that person's functioning at a high level, it's probably because they have a very regimented bedtime and wake time. And the National Institute of Health came out with this study showing that 100 students, their GPA was higher if they went to bed and woke up at the same time, more so than if they got a long period of sleep. So it was ultimately more important to be a regular sleeper than it was to be um, a long sleeper. We then ran this over 10 million data sets uh, on the WHOOP database, and we found indeed that the people who go to bed and wake up at the same time uh, have higher uh, heart rate variabilities, lower resting heart rates, they get more slow wave sleep. There's just a lot of physiological benefits. So that's one amazing hack. Hmm. Uh, If you have trouble falling asleep, uh, I think that most people, their rooms aren't cold enough and their rooms aren't dark enough. Those are things that can both affect how you fall asleep and can affect how well you sleep during the night. So on the point of view about light, I have blackout shades. I also wear an eye mask. That's something I started doing maybe six months ago, but I noticed it was improving my data. So you you just need to be in a darker environment. Now, okay, I, I have a whoop. And I've been enjoying using it, but I know the majority of my audience out here, most of the people listening and reading the Get Fit Guy, probably don't have the device and and maybe aren't aren't interested in getting it. Do you have any advice for the audience on how they can quantify their recovery without purchasing a Whoop or like something they could do tomorrow, say? Well, I think first of all, I would say like you should seriously consider Whoop or even something else. I think managing um, your data is is fundamental. Like you need to measure sleep and recovery to understand your body, and it's it's literally a third of your life that is a complete blind spot for you know ninety nine point nine nine percent of the population, and you can be part of that 001 percent that has a real edge in this world. So that's that's the one plea I'll make. I think Whoop's the best, but honestly, just 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 measuring this stuff makes a big difference. Uh, there's a few things that are directionally helpful. I think one is if you wake up without an alarm clock versus need an alarm clock to wake up. That's generally a sign of whether or not your your body is more rested. Uh, that's quite different from just kind of waking up jittery at a random time in the night. I'm talking about you set your alarm for 7 a.m. and you woke up at 6.55 naturally. That tends to be a very good sign that your body is, is uh, well rested. Uh, I also think 
be mindful of the degree to which you need caffeine throughout the day versus you're just drinking caffeine. Uh, I try to drink caffeine when I feel I need it versus, you know, just the addiction of drinking a cup of coffee whenever you can order one, which I think some people do. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> yeah. So that, that can be another way, uh, you know, just understanding if your body is cra- if your body's craving something because it needs it to function or whether it's craving something just because you want it, especially related to caffeine, that's a good measurement for restfulness. I think that soreness is a, is like a really hard one from a from a feel standpoint. I don't like we don't see soreness correlate that closely with um, with readiness. There's the extreme example where it's like painful for you to move, but you know if your body's really sore or slightly sore, it's hard to it's hard to equate that to whether or not you should be exercising at a certain level or not. I would avoid using soreness as any real predictor. You know, I'm a big fan personally of meditation. And so even if you can't measure the benefits of meditation, uh, you should know there are clear physiological benefits to meditating. It increases your heart rate variability. It makes your sleeping more effective, higher quality. Uh, And generally speaking, that holds true regardless of the form of meditation. I think it's one of those things that just doing it Uh, whether it's transcendental or whether it's mindfulness throughout the day or, you know, we could go into different things. Like I think all of that is generally good. So although that may not tie directly to your question, I think that's something that can improve uh, sleep, which in turn improves recovery. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for coming on and talking about um, not only talking about whoop, but talking about the importance of recovery. It's something that I hold near and dear to my heart because I really feel like it's an overlooked part of this fitness puzzle here. So um, can you let everybody know where they can find out more information about Whoop and about you? Absolutely. You can check out Whoop at Whoop.com. That's just W-H-O-O-P.com and and check out our uh, our membership offers there and and the technology. And you can find me online on social media at Will Ahmed. Uh, I love responding to customers and users and uh, happy to answer any questions you might have. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Will. Thanks, Brock. Really enjoyed it. Okay. I want to thank Will one more time for coming on the podcast and giving us all that great information. And I also want to thank him for giving us a discount code. And all you have to do is go to join.whoop, that's W-H-O-O-P, Dot com, And then if you want to sign up, you can use the discount code FIT, that's F-I-T, and you will get $30 off your new membership by signing up online. So that's join.whoop.com and use the discount code FIT. Thank you, Will. That is really generous of you. All right. Get Fit Guy is written, narrated, and produced by me, Brock Armstrong, with a lot of support from all the folks at Quick and Dirty Tips, and that's Beata Santora, Morgan Ratner, Michelle Margulis, Emily Miller, and of course, Kathy Doyle. If you enjoyed this podcast, please consider leaving a review over at Apple Podcasts or wherever you happen to listen to this podcast. And of course, find me over at Facebook and Twitter. I'm at Get Fit Guy. And I'm also at BrockArmstrong.com. Now, what are you waiting for? Get out there and recover. Recover.